definitely has the kick. I keep going back between black coffee and milk coffee and both of them are great because I'm lucky enough to be living in Melbourne, the coffee capital of the world, an official one. If you guys have ever thought about casting your own jewelry, this is the video for you. I'm gonna take you through the entire process of designing new rings, printing them using my 3D printer, cleaning and curing them using my cleaning station, then getting them ready and preparing them for my casting process. We'll be using a few different machines and tools during the process. So I'll run you through exactly what the purpose of every single machine is and how I achieve the results that I do and what are some things that can actually cause failures. So let's jump into that. I'll tell you what, why I have learned um, Rhino, I have done that course. I still find myself following YouTube videos um, while I'm making designs, for example, like I've got um, a video open there and then I'm following along and trying to create the design that I want to create. Anyway, let's continue doing this design. All right, so after about 45 minutes, I've finally completed the ring. Let me show you what the ring looks like for now. So this is what the ring looks like that I'm going to be 3D printing now that the design is all done. Um, and the idea is to then engrave on top of the ring. I'm still not quite sure about the height here, but I did want it to be a bit chunky. So I think this is what I wanted. Um, and this is the video that I followed along. Um, so thank you JTI Designs for your video. Really appreciate you putting that on there. Next step is to do a render for this, a realistic render to see what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna do that now and I'll see you guys later. There are a few different softwares out there for 3D rendering, but I use a software called Light Tracer. The process really just involves putting in different lighting and textures onto your design. Okay, so I've got the 3D render all done as well, and I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. I think I am gonna put this through the casting run, and once it's casted, I'm gonna get onto it and engrave the dates on it, because that's the whole idea. While this step is not necessary, it really gives you the closest you can get to looking at the ring without actually casting it. And that's why I really like doing a 3D render before I uh, really try to create anything. So as a next step, I'm going to 3D print the ring using my 3D printer. That takes about two and a half to three hours, depending on the layer height that I pick. So it's gonna take about three hours. Once that is done, I'm gonna finish it and polish it. And then tomorrow, we're gonna put in a fresh casting run. Let's go. All right, so after about a total of three hours, 10 minutes and three seconds of printing, we have the rings ready. Next step is to take them out, clean them up, cure them so they are ready for the casting process. Let's get into it. Now while I'm preparing these prints, let's talk about the resin that I use. Um, in this process, I have used the Soraya Tech Purple Resin. I have tried their blue resin as well. And while that also gives great results, I prefer purple over blue. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I use my own money to buy it off Amazon. I just like that it's cheap, but it works great. Now for the cleaning and curing process, I dip my prints into isopropyl alcohol for about two minutes a time. And if the first cycle doesn't clean them enough, I repeat it again for another two minutes until it's all ready to roll. Once I have cleaned the prints with IPA, I dip them into my ultrasonic cleaner and then dry them using a blower to ensure that there is no residue left. I have noticed that if there is residue left, it behaves and reacts to the investment. And uh, over the course of last three, four months, I've learned that you really need to clean and cure the prints properly for a good casting run. I do separate my pieces before curing them. I just find that works better for me. But once the pieces are separated, I put them into my curing station. And while you don't need as long as I put them in for, I do put them in for half an hour. I just don't like taking chances, honestly. I've been told that uh, five minutes is enough, but I put them in for half an hour. Works fine for me. 
once they are cured I take the supports off these prints and after that I clean them up slightly if there are any imperfections if there are indents I use wax to cover them or if there are surface issues I use my rotatory tools to clean them up a little bit it's a lot easier when they're in print form than once they're casted so I ensure I prepare them before casting properly once that's done the next step is to get the wax tree ready for the casting process for the wax tree itself I just use a soldering iron I've realized that that works pretty well but I also tend to use a thinner middle support than the usual just because it saves me a bit of metal once the tree is ready I get the flask ready using a pretty small flask for this run because there's only six rings in there so I cover the flask with tape to ensure when I pour the investment in obviously it doesn't leak out uh, and you can see I've left like a fair bit extra on top that's because when I put the flask in vacuum chamber to get the air out the investment tends to just swell up slightly once that is done I measure for this specific flask 350 650 grams of my investment and 250 mils of water I put the water first of course that is always recommended when you are doing a wet to dry mix once that's done my total working time is about eight minutes so I use a good old hand blender to blend everything together for the first four minutes and uh, uh, in this process I ensure that I'm changing the speed of the hand blender to not only mix the investment properly but also to make sure I am uh, really just spending the time it needs I use prestige Optima investment powder uh, for no other reason but the fact that it was on sale I grabbed myself two of the 20 kilo tubs I believe it was 150 Australian dollars and that was pretty good and when I started using it I, I realized that it actually is uh, it's pretty good for investment casting so I continued using it uh -oh. I'm gonna pause here for a second what I'm doing here is actually incorrect I completely missed a step I was supposed to put the rubber container with investment into the vacuum chamber to get the bubbles out because I was shooting I completely forgot about that and the outcome of that was that when I put the flask into the vacuum chamber there was a lot of air bubbles in it and investment kind of over flew a little bit uh, I didn't have a full flask at the time of casting make sure that you put the rubber container in the vacuum chamber first once you do a dry run there to take the bubbles out pour the investment into your flask and then put the flask again to take out any leftover bubbles Anyway, let's continue. All right, so now that the flask is ready, we're just gonna let it sit here for uh, about an hour. Now, this time depends on the size of your flask because my flask is just a small one. I'm gonna let it sit here for an hour. And after that, we're gonna pop it into the oven for the burnout cycle. It's been over an hour. The flask was sitting here. I'm gonna pop it into the oven. The burnout cycle is actually gonna take about seven hours and it's already around three o'clock. So it's gonna go late into the night. I'll try to finish this video. Uh, cover the rest of the process tonight as well Notice the investment dried out on our side of the flask that was because of the mistake I mentioned previously in this video Don't forget to take the rubber bottom off. I've actually done this mistake before where I just popped it in like that You can imagine it Wasn't a pretty sight <laughs> Flask is in I've already set up my burnout cycle here, so just turning it on. There we go. Be back in eight hours. And now at the final stage of the process, the burnout cycle has completed. We have reached the pouring temperature, which I have always kept at 500 degrees Celsius. So the oven is gonna remain at that temperature and the flask will stay at that temperature. At the same time, I have now turned on the smelter. I've got sterling silver in there. Uh, uh, it's currently at 700 degrees. I'm gonna wait for it to reach 1060. We'll transfer the flask onto the vacuum machine, turn the vacuum on and then pour the sterling silver into our flask. It will go flow into the cavity with some assistance from the vacuum and we should have a completed 
casting rod. Once the burning cycle has been completed, we take the flask out and put the flask into the vacuum chamber. Vacuum assists with the flow of metal inside the cavity that is now left in the investment. Then we take out our molten metal and pour it into our flask. The molten metal will make its way through the cavity and result in what we hope a successful cast. After waiting for a couple of minutes, we quench the flask. This allows for the investment to break down completely. Revealing our casting. So what you see on the screen is the final product. Now this particular cycle, uh, after cleaning this up, I realized that because of the mistake I committed in the video, I, there were some artifacts on the surface of the rings. Nothing you can't really clean up with a bit of buff and a polish. So I wasn't too concerned. Next step involves just cutting out the rings off the tree carefully and then polishing the surface of the rings with different compounds, uh, ensuring that it is ready for its final stage. I currently use hand rotatory tools for polishing purposes as it works well. I haven't had an issue with it. There are a few different stages within the polish process, but it works quite well. Now with the final polish all done, it's time to take some professional photographs. I'll be taking through how I take these rings and then laser engrave them. So for that and more, I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe.